Okay, continuing our final exam review. So in this case, um, inequalities. This is what we did the second unit of the year. So I think most people found this pretty straightforward, but you need to make sure you resurrect some of this information. Um, what we want to be able to do is to be able to represent things um, on a number line and in interval notation and inequalities. Okay, so I'm asked here. So in each column below, represent the set of all numbers that are greater than 3 and less than or equal to 9. So numbers that are greater than 3. So that means numbers that are greater than 3. And at the same time, these numbers are less than or equal to 9. Okay. So you can write it this way, or you could write x is greater than 3 and x is less than or equal to 9. That's inequality notation. What does this look like on a number line? You've got the number 3, and you've got the number, sorry, it's not 9, it's 19. You've got the number 3, you've got the number 19. So this means numbers that are greater than 3, and at the same time, less than or equal to 19. What does this look like in interval notation? Just copy the numbers you see from the number line. This is the interval from 3 to 19, parentheses and bracket. Okay. When it comes to solving inequalities, same rules apply um, as uh, solving equations. The big thing is when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. So if I've got negative 5x plus 7 less than 9, my goal is to isolate this variable term. So let's subtract 7 from both sides. So you get negative 5x less than 2. Now I need to divide by negative 5. What I will always do is circle that inequality when I do something like this. I'm dividing both sides by a negative. So when I do that, I need to change that inequality. X is greater than negative 2 fifths. So, um, and let's see if I did that right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what that one looks like. Um, and there's a separate one, this graph on the, uh, on the right. So how does this look on a number line? On a number line, this is negative two-fifths to infinity. Okay. Uh, that's what it looks like on a number line. The interval is negative two-fifths to infinity. <clears throat> now, we also solved compound inequalities. Anytime you see something like this, you've got two inequalities. Your goal is to break it into two separate problems. So in this case, the first problem is what you see right here. And the second problem is what you see right here. So negative 4 less than 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3 less than 10. Um, when you get both of these solutions, so x greater than negative 7 halves, less than or equal to 7 halves. So this answer, this is the interval from negative 7 halves to 7 halves. On a number line, that would look like negative 7 halves, 7 halves, and from there to there. Okay, So breaking it into two uh, separate inequalities. Now, the ones that you had to pay special close attention is when we see an absolute value. So in this case, what we were taught to do when we have 3x minus 4, absolute value, less than 9. Break this into two separate problems. First problem, copy down everything you see exactly like it is without the absolute value. Second problem, make two changes, 3x minus 4. Instead of less than, make it greater than. Instead of positive 9, make it negative 9. Now, solve both of these problems. This is 3x less than 13 x less than 13 over 3, and 3x is greater than uh, negative 5, x is greater than negative 5 thirds, okay? If you were to draw that on a number line or interval notation, that is just the interval from negative 5 thirds to 13 over 3. Now, there are a couple of special cases when you have absolute value with negative signs, okay? x plus 7, absolute value greater than negative 10. This is a positive number. The absolute value of something is a positive number. This is a negative number on the right. What are all the positive numbers that are greater than the negative numbers? 
every one of them, okay? Every positive number is greater than. So this is all, all real numbers is the solution to this one. Doesn't matter what you put in, this is going to be uh, a true statement. And then if you see something like this, so the um, so again, this is the interval is what? Negative infinity to infinity. The next one over here, you've got absolute value 2x minus 9 less than or equal to negative 5. The key is when you see that negative number with an absolute value problem. This is a positive number on the left. This is a negative number on the right. This is asking for the positive numbers that are less than negative 5. What are all the positive numbers that are less than negative 5? None of them. Uh, so there is no solution. Okay, because all the positive numbers happen to be greater than negative 5. There are none less than negative 5. So let's work a few problems in this section. This is a simple inequality because I only see one inequality. My goal is just to isolate the x. Okay, so the first thing I do here is divide both sides by 3. So I get 16 is less than 3 times 3x plus 4. Let's distribute 16 less than 9x plus 12. Let's subtract 12 from both sides. And I'll work down here that you get 4 less than 9x. So if I divide both sides by 9, so I get 4 ninths less than x. Another way of writing it, if I write it with the x first, that's x greater than 4 ninths. So on a number line, if that's 4 ninths, this is my solution in interval notation. My answer is 4 ninths to infinity. four x minus one greater than negative 17 add one to both sides four x greater than equal to negative 16 divide both sides by four x greater than equal to negative four on a number line greater than equal to negative four looks like this that interval is from negative four to infinity Compound inequality. So you've got two inequalities, just treat them as two separate problems. X plus 5 greater than 7. X over 9 less than or equal to negative 1. Okay. In this first one, if I subtract 5 from both sides, I get X greater than 2. In the next one, if I multiply everything by 9, X less than or equal to negative 9. So negative 9, positive 2. This is what it means to be less than or equal to negative 9. Greater than 2 looks this direction. Those are two intervals. This is the interval from negative infinity to negative 9, or the interval from 2 to infinity. Next one, I have a compound inequality. I want to break this into two problems. Negative 12 less than or equal to x minus 4. x minus 4 less than or equal to 3. So if I add 4 to both sides, so negative 8 less than or equal to x. This is another way of just saying x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Over here, add 4 to both sides. x is less than or equal to 7. So all the numbers that are bigger than negative 8 and at the same time less than or equal to 7. That looks like this. That interval is from negative 8 to 7. Q plus 1 less than or equal to 5. Absolute value. Q plus 1 is less than or equal to 5. I'm breaking this into two problems. And Q plus 1, I'm going to flip that inequality greater than or equal to negative 5. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, Q is less than or equal to 4. Subtract 1 from both sides. Q greater than or equal to negative 6. So negative 6 and 4. Numbers that are less than negative 4, greater than negative 6. This is the interval from negative 6 to 4. 9 minus 4x. Break this into two problems. Less than or equal to 33 and 9 minus 4x 
greater than or equal to minus 33. And the way I'm going to solve this, let's subtract 9 from both sides. So I get negative 4x less than or equal to, so 33 minus 9 is going to be, what, 24. Now I need to divide both sides by negative 4. The minute I do that, this inequality has to change. x greater than or equal to negative 6. Over here, if I subtract 9 from both sides, negative 4x greater than or equal to minus 42. Same thing. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4, knowing that when I do that, I'm going to change that inequality. So this is x less than or equal to um, 42 divided by 4. Um, that's 21 over 2, which is about 11 or so. So anyway, um, greater than negative 6. So I've got negative 6 and got 21 over 2. And so numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 6 and at the same time less than or equal to this, this interval is negative 6 to 21 over 2. And the last one here. Uh, absolute value with a negative sign. This is where you just have to pay close attention and you're bringing some intelligence to the problem. You don't just proceed like we did with the other problems. So you've got absolute value of 6x minus 5 greater than negative 12. This is a negative number. This is a positive number. Are there positive numbers that are bigger than the negative numbers? Yes, every positive number. So this is all real numbers. That interval is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay? And that is it for 7.3 inequality.